Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. And here's your host, John Chapman. What is going on, Faithful? It is absolutely incredible to be with you guys. I'm excited. Um, we're going to be doing a post-free agency mock draft. Just got back from a little vacation with the wifey, which was awesome. Um, and just excited to talk about all the things going on. Because the Niners kind of shored up a lot of spots on the draft. On, on the roster, especially defensive line, which, you know, I, I understand why everybody out there is just talking nonstop about offensive line. I get those under, I, I get those complaints and, and I am with you, but I have also been on the other side of this saying the biggest need on this roster heading into free agency was defensive line. It was defensive end. Then you cut Eric Armstead. Then it was defensive tackle. And I, I think that, the approach that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan had was, look, man, you signed four defensive linemen in three days. The first three days of free agency, probably not as fast or as blockbuster or whatever, they went after it pretty dang hard. And so I think that it's huge. And again, we, we say this every single year, every year. The 49ers will do whatever they can in free agency to make it so that when they go into the draft, they don't have a glaring need that they have to draft this position. And I know we're sitting there as fans that have watched this and are just like offensive line, right tackle, center, all those things. Like those are major, major issues. However, the 49ers are returning all 11, really 12 starters, if you want to count Kyle Juszczyk and or Juwan Jennings. All 12 starters from the Super Bowl. They had one of the best offenses in the history of the NFL. So you're bringing all of that back. You, you don't, you know, it just be com complicit with that. Just be like, yeah, you know, complacent is a better word. Yeah, we'll just stay with what we got. You can still upgrade. But they didn't see those taking place in free agency. The, the Feliciano signing is by far the biggest on the offensive side. That's huge. He should start day one finally. Um, and so that's why I'm excited about that. Now, as we get into this draft, and I'm excited about it, you know, we're going to do a four round mock draft and just kind of see do we want to trade up? Do we want to trade back? What's available? Play with a lot of just, you know, hypothesis and just kind of play around because now we, you don't have to do anything. I feel like the starters are set. We know that Shanahan redshirts everybody anyway. So you're kind of sitting there and you're just like, huh let's go kind of a best player available as much as the 49ers can. It's still going to be a premium position the first and second round. Um, they do not miss with that. Now let's get to a couple comments. Appreciate you guys. Mike, appreciate you, man. Glad you're back. What's up, Mateo? Kib, all the hashtag CCs. You guys are the best. Hey, Shot J. Uh, Mike says, I look forward to every single mock draft. Mike, don't miss, man. He's, he's the best. Kim, thanks for welcoming me back. Appreciate you. Agorist. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> he says, man, it turned to spring while you were gone. The funny thing is it was cloudy when we got on a plane to Cabo. And when we got back, it was cloudy again. Um, and so, yeah, we woke up and my son goes, it was sunny the whole time you were gone. I'm just bringing the sadness to the bay. And so I apologize for that. Um, Mateo says, hope you had a good time in Mexico. It was awesome. Got to see Wells. Uh, went out to, you know, the Ark. El Arco uh, several times. It was great. Lots of cervezas and lots of pool time. It was awesome. Um, so let's do this. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Now, be right before we do this, a little bit of business, and I think this is fun business. We are hosting our second annual 49ers Rush Bracket Challenge uh, for March Madness. We're putting a little extra gravy on top. The winner gets an autographed Deion Sanders jersey. That you got to beat me. Last year I did pretty good. I think I got like third last year. Um, so here's here's how this works. Very simple. If you are on our Patreon, anything, friend of the show, one dollar. You're a one dollar contributor. You're in for free. If you're on the 49ersrush.com, any level, 
It's already been posted there. You can check out under the betting it's been posted or the friend of the show. On Patreon, it's already up on well. Now, if you're not one of those, if you don't support the show those ways, that's okay. And you want to take part in this, the best way, the easiest way is just go sign up over there. Do a free trial. It's free. Once you sign up and do the free trial, you get the information on how to enter the bracket challenge. It's going to be over on ESPN. The password and the link's there. You put in your bracket. Whoever wins, awesome. Um, and again, you do the free trial and you can cancel right after. I don't mind that at all. While you're there, you got seven days. You can check out all the content we're going to be doing. Right after I finish this show, I'm going back to the film room and I'm going to be doing a Malik Collins breakdown over there for the 49ersrush.com and our Patreon channel. But if you don't want to do that, you don't want to mess with that, but you still want to participate, you can send a Venmo payment for $10. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. It's at Jonathan. Um, dash Chapman dash two again. Just check, make sure you get the spelling right. It's in the description of this audio or video, whatever you're watching, however you're doing that. Um, and once you send the ten dollar payment, I will message the transaction on Venmo with the link and with the password so that you can join. So if you want to pay ten bucks to do it, cool. But if you're on Patreon or the 49ersrush.com, it's free. It's a fun way to talk trash to each other, and we'll track it as the uh, college football tournament goes. I'm sporting my Longhorns. You know, that's what I do. We got seven seed. So if, if you want to beat me, I, I got I got the Longhorns advancing a couple rounds. I'll just throw that out there. I don't have them making the final four, but I wish they would. I hope I'm wrong about that. Um, anyway, so go check that out. Now, let's do this. We are going to be over on Mock Draftable. Um, mockdraftdatabase.com, and they've got a mock draft simulator. Uh, we've done PFF mostly. I like both of these. Um, my favorite thing about mock draft database is that you can see the players that are on the board. So if you do want to trade up, that is an option that is there, um, which, you know, PFF does not give you, and that's a little frustrating. Um, but that's okay. We'll be talking through these and try to make sure we do this right. So we're doing 49ers, of course. We're doing a four-round mock draft. We're going to go normal speed. Uh, last time we went slow, and you can't change it once you start here. Um, so let's see. Let's start this. And, you know, I'm not too concerned with what other teams are doing, but I do want to pause it around like 21-ish um, just because I think that's a natural progression for the 49ers to start the trade-up conversation, not saying we should trade up. And for the people that are like, you know, we had 10 picks in this draft left because you traded one of the seventh rounders for Malik. Got a starting defensive tackle, which is awesome. Um, there are some players available. Look at this. So right now the Eagles are on the clock at pick 22. Um, and he, here's what's left on the big board. You have Quinion Mitchell, cornerback. That's a surprise. Jared Verse, edge Florida State. You know, if you're one of those people, there's three edges in this class that are deemed, you know, top tier caliber players. Uh, Jerry versus one of them, Florida State guy. Um, and shoot, Latu's available too. So you got two edge guys. You got John Newton, Jerzon Newton, the defensive tackle, which is a legit possibility since the Armstead cutting Kool Aid Ministry, Chop Robinson, Tyler Guyton, um, Graham Barton, Adonai Mitchell, Darius Robinson. There's a lot of guys that are there that I'm like, ooh, Jordan Morgan, Morgan, um, Ennis Rakeshaw, the slot corner out of Missouri. There's guys. And so I'm sitting here like, okay, what would it cost to trade up? I'm not sure it's really worth it. If we were trading up, it'd be one of these edge guys. But then I'm like, there's two of them. Why why, why don't we just wait a little bit and, and kind of see? So I'm, I'm going to unpause it and pause it again in a second. So right there, the next two picks – where the corner, um, Quinion Mitchell and Chop Robinson, we're at pick 24 now. I'm going to keep going. Guyton went and Kool-Aid Ministry went. There's still two defensive ends. We're picking in two, four, six spots. You've got two DNs. You've got Jerzon Newton. I'd be fine with that. Grant Barton, fine with that. Darius Robinson, fine with that. You know, we've got four players sitting there that I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep rolling. Okay, Adonai Mitchell went. All right, Darius Robinson went. So we're picking in four, and I've got – I'm just going to let it roll because I'm fine with what falls to me at 31 now. And, you know, trading up for an edge, that's a Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch thing. I would not be upset if they did that, and I do not expect 
verse and law two to fall um, at all. That That's not something that I am expecting, but I'm going to let it go. So I'm going to, we're, we're going to see what happens here. Worthy verse Newton went. So now the 49ers on the clock, we got some offers. Uh, I'm just going to set those aside for now. Let's talk about what is available. And, you know, I, I like this right here from Dumpster Fire Dan. He says, I'm convinced they'll take a defensive tackle at 31. One of the big three will be available, Rook, Newton, Murphy. Well, if we look at, you know, what's there now, Rook has got to be available. He's way down the list, according to this. I like Rook. Roy, Ro, Ro. Um, He's way, is, did he go? Yeah, he's 62 overall on Mock Draft Database, so. He's not there for me, but I'm with you. I think defensive tackle is extremely high on this list, extremely high. So just best available overall. Then we'll look at the tra the trades that came through. Uh, Law two. That seems just like I would have been fine if the Niners traded up for him. We got his brother. If the medicals check out, Edge, huge position of need. Absolutely, just adore this kid. You know what? What? It, whenever I was ta talking about him. Um, you know, he, here's what I wrote, uh, 23 years old, ideal size and get off, very polished, great hands, great versus the run and pass coachable, pure skill as an edge rusher. And, and the whole time he doesn't remind me of Bosa, but his hands do. He doesn't play like Bosa, but he is a guy that wins not with talent, like a chase young or a miles Garrett or, or burst like a TJ Watt. This dude is a technician with his arms and hips and shoulders. And like, he is just fluid. I have no problem whatsoever. Now, having said this, I, I don't know what his medicals are. He's had, this is another guy that was retired. Dude was done with football. And that could cause the drop. It's up to each individual team. Are you comfortable with this? Now, we had an edge player that was almost identical, and that was Jordan Phillips out of Miami. How'd that pan out? Dude is a freak. It was a crazy value. Should have been a top five pick. I had him ranked really high. But again, I don't know the medical. So that, that's up to everybody individually on that, right? Um, Graham Barton's there. Uh, Bo Nix fell the quarterback. That might be somebody they trade. Somebody's trying to trade up for. Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, Penix Jr., Jordan Morgan, uh, Ennis Rakestraw, Troy Franklin. Like, there's so many guys. Zach Frazier, gosh. Kingsley Suamatia. Like, so if you want to tackle, Kingsley's probably your first choice. And so some people are probably upset because it's like, man, we don't have a tackle here. But I'm fine with Graham Barton. I'm fine with Lot. Law two would be my pick, hands down. Like, that just seems easy. The 49ers see it quarterback, then defensive end. Those are the two most important positions in the in the NFL. That That's the way they see it. That's the way I see it as well. You're either the quarterback or you're stopping the quarterback. <laughs> or you're helping the quarterback. Like, you fall into one of those three categories. Which one are you? And so if you're not the quarterback, are you stopping them or are you helping them? Those three. Boom, boom. Those are the three tiers. So if I'm drafting here... Law two's the pick easy. Do I think that he will fall that far? I do not. You can see mock draft database has him at number 17 overall, but the medicals could cause a Ruben Foster esque. That's a gamble. Niners have stayed away from these players in the past early on after Ruben Foster and after Kinlaw. So I, I don't know. Let's look at the traits. Okay, this one's stupid. Uh, oh, no, no, no. That's that's not one of the offers. I clicked the wrong button. My bad. <coughs> okay, the Cardinals have offered a trade, which they have the most picks in this draft, so it kind of makes sense there. Divisional trades do happen. The Cardinals want our pick, number 31, currently. They are willing to give up, number 35 overall. A fourth rounder this year, plus a fifth and sixth rounder next year. So you're falling back four spots and getting a fourth this year, a fifth and sixth next year. That's not a bad trade. It really, really isn't. The Jaguars, 
Ah, this one's a little too crazy for me with the Niners trying to win now. The Jaguars won our current pick. That's it. But they're only going to give us a third and a fourth this year. So pick number 96 and 114 overall. However, do you want to stock up in the future? Because they're offering our, us their second, fifth, and seventh rounder next year. And that could be a top 40 pick. But I'm going to say no to this because, again, I want picks now. Our championship window is now. I would love to get that early second rounder next year, but no, I want a premium player this draft. We haven't had that opportunity since the Trey Lance trade. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm staying away from that. Uh, Texans, what's up, D'Amico? What you got for us? They want pick 31. They're going to give us their second, third, two sevenths, but their second round pick isn't until 59. So we'd be dropping back 28 spots. Again, I'm not liking this trade. You get a two and a three, which I like that. But then, you know, they're offering a fifth and a seventh next year. I don't like it. Um, here we go. The the Steelers, they're offering us pick 51 in the second round. Their, number th their third round pick, number 84, their sixth round pick, and next year's fourth. Not bad, but we'd be dropping back 20 spots. Uh-uh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm rejecting all of these trades. As GM, I'm saying, no, we're not doing it. We're, we've got guys on the board. So now I'm going to turn it over to you. Democracy is here. Um, I, I might overrule. Who do you guys want here? My decision comes down to Latu, Graham Barton, and Ennis Rakestraw. I, 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 I like Zach Frazier more than most. But I understand that Graham Barton fits what the 49ers do so much better. Because he could come in right now and compete at right tackle or center. You know what I mean? That's what he could do. If you bring in Frazier, he could just compete at center and left guard. Maybe right guard. Latu's the pick, though, right? Latu's got to be the pick. Um, I, I think that's it, it's too simple. Uh, my, you know, Mike says he likes the Cardinals trade. Man, I, it's just falling back just too much for me. It, it's too much. Uh, yeah, Tommy. Says, man, got to be law too. Has a chance for immediate impact. Super high ceiling. We have his brother on the roster. Maybe we just drafted the wrong one. <laughs> uh, there's no wrong player. Uh, yeah, I'm taking it. So we're we're going we're going law too. I, I'm drafting him. Now, having said that, we could pause this and trade back up if we want to. However. Man, I, I'm watching these two guys, Graham Barton and Zach Frazier. If one of those guys go off, I, I'm I'm willing to trade up. I'm just watching. Okay, one of them's gone. It didn't take long. We're at pick 41. Let, let's open up our draft calculator. Well, let's just we'll play with it. Let, let's see here. I, I'm opening up the draft calculator. And I'm going to see what it's going to take for us to jump. Man, 41 is just too high. That's where he's valued, though. So Mock Draft Database has Zach Frazier as the number 41 overall player. We're at pick 41. This is where it is. The 49ers are picking 63rd, which is 276 points. To trade up right here, it's worth 490. You have to make up 230 points. Gosh, that would cost. It's going to cost too much. Let's see if we could try to do like a dumb let, – let's just play with it. Because if there's a way we could come away with these two players, we'd have to offer our third round pick. So we'd offer our second and third plus a fourth, and that's that's just like a 50-50. Oh, I don't like that. No. I mean, we, we'd have to offer second, fourth. And we'd have to do it next year. Four, still not enough. Next year, third. That's too much for a center. A two, a four, and next year's three? I can't do that. You know, next year's not like this year. We're not going to have 11 picks next year. Right now, the compensation pick formula over on over the cap, now you're still waiting on some details. They have us getting a seventh-round comp pick. That's it. That's it. We didn't lose a lot of premium 
players this year. We have it. I think once it's all said and done, we'll get like a sixth and a seventh. But we're not getting third, fourths, and fifths. That's not happening next year. So it's a little different. So I, this is too rich for my blood. So I'm going to wait. And if Zach Frazier falls another five picks or so, then we'll see. So I'm, I'm going to pause it, unpause it. And right there, all right, we're at pick 47. Zach Frazier's still there. So the difference between 41, which was worth 490 points, to 47, that's 430 points. So, so we dropped 60 points. Now the question is, is that worth... And I do not want to give up that third pick. It's not enough. We still we're still hurting, man. I'm not giving up a second and a third. I'm not doing that. Man, I wish we could find a way to make this work. Give up two four, still not enough. Still not enough. We got it. He's got to fall more. He's got to fall more. So we're letting it ride. Now we're at pick 51. Is Zach Fraser still there? Can, can we trade up here? We're, we're offering peanuts, and I don't I don't think they want to trade with us. I think they're going to take the same thing. And it's funny because, you know, Mock Draft Database does a good job because some teams are more likely to trade than others. Like, oh, I didn't change the team. Thanks, guys. So I got to switch it to Pittsburgh. Here we go. Let's let's see what this is going to cost. All right. So now we can give up one of our fourths, and I think it's going to work. So right now, I'm going to try to be chintzy. Oh, they don't want me to be chintzy. So right now I'm offering our second rounder pick 63 and our middle fourth rounder 131 overall to jump up 12 spots in the second with Pittsburgh, which would be pick 51. Oh, I'm offering this trade. And they took it. So, boom. No, we're not trading back with you. You rejected us, Green Bay. We're rejecting you. Get off my lawn. Freaking Packers. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, the 49ers are back on the clock right now. And I don't think that this is too much of a debate. Like, this is Peanut Jeff. Thank you. He says, Frazier's a real center. Um, I, 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 right here. Uh, dumpster fire. You know, Frazier or Barton can't go wrong with either. I, I love it. And, you know, Peter says, you know, trade 20, 25 picks. I kind of want the options there. And I, I feel like the 49ers like trading picks in next year's draft before the trade deadline, right? We've done it like four years in a row. And I think they're going to continue that trend. I really do. So now we're back on the clock, and I'm not even looking. I'm taking Zach Frazier. And now the 49ers got a top-tier edge. We got an A for the law two pick, and then we traded up for Zach Frazier. We got an A plus. We got an A plus on the Zach Frazier pick at fifty one. I would. There is nobody that would be happier than John Chapman right here. I'm telling you that right now. So our next pick is pick ninety four. Um, I'm letting it run just a little bit. I don't want to do two trade ups unless something falls to kind of like the eighty five range. So I'll pause it right there. Okay, we're at pick 86 now. Let's look at what's available. We're picking 94. So we're picking about nine spots. Here's what's on the board. Max Melton, corner, love him. Uh, Mason Smith, D-lineman. Karen Armageggi, the tackle from Yale. Dontrez Walker, Blake Corum, Jeremiah Trotter. Like, there's guys. Chris Abrams, drain, corner. Like, there are some guys that are here for sure. Brennan Rice, you know, that's Jerry's son. There's guys that fit here. Dominique Puny, interior offensive lineman. Theo Johnson, the tight end. That would be a perfect fit. Like, there's guys. Cedric Gray, tackling linebacker. A lot of fun. Andrew Phillips, Niners love him. Like, there's guys here. So, Luke McCaffrey, Michael Pratt, uh, the, the quarterback, if we don't get a backup. So, I'm just going to let it roll. I want to unpause it. I'm just going to wait for us to be on the clock here. And, you know, one of my favorite things about doing these mock drafts is I don't mind trading up, but I want to mirror that with the trade back. But we'll see. Right here, Washington, Adam Peters calls us. He's trying to get next year picks. 
He wants this third, our third round pick number 94 overall. He wants to give us his third round next year and his fourth round next year. That's a little rough for me. Um, Buffalo Bills, they're offering us their fifth rounder and next year's fourth. I don't like that. Those are the only two. I don't like those trades. That I might take the Washington one, but again, if I was trading, you know, fourth and fifth rounders, that's one thing. Third rounders, we need players. The depth on this team, the 49ers 2024 49ers, it's not there. We need players. It, like, I understand the idea of redshirting, and Kyle's going to try to do that again. Ah, I don't know. All right. Um, so let's see here. We're on the clock. Max Melton's there. I freaking love this kid. And I think the 49ers like him much more than me. Josh, who's helped us with a lot of the draft work, uh, his second favorite player in this draft. Six foot 190, ran a 439, pure speed. Met with the 49ers several times. Um, can play all the corner spots, very well rounded corner explosive lower body, dominated the combine, offensive player in high school has an extra gear. The more I watch him, the more I like him. He had three interceptions, five pass breakups. I mean, he's just good. Likes to tackle. Footwork's great. Run support's good. A Dory Jackson type of guy. But I think the slot is where he fits. Um, so I, I think, you know, if we're going corner... Max Melton in the third, I'm not sure he'll be there. Before the combine, he was like a fifth-round prospect. Combine, he was a fourth-round prospect. He's one of the corners that have met with more teams than almost anybody else because he fits everything. You want a man corner? You want a zone corner? You want a nickel corner? You want an outside corner? You want somebody who can play safety? He checks every damn box. And so whenever you get these players like him that's on every single team's draft board, you know, I don't know off the field. I don't know medical. I'm not going to. Um, but, you know, that's a for real one. Jonathan Brooks running back. I mean, he's basically, he's incredible <laughs> coming off an injury. But running back's too rich for me. I understand the third round running back craze. Uh, Mason Smith. Let's, let's look up Mason Smith real quick. You look at, you know, LSU 6'6", 315 defensive tackle. He's huge, man. Small hands, eight and a half inch hands. That's weird for a six six dude. Uh, five, you know, almost a five flat forty. Met with the Niners. He's twenty one years old. He tore his ACL in twenty twenty two, but he played the whole. He played five eighty two snaps last year and was really really good. He's a B gap defender. Um, he, fun player, true pass. You know, set. Whenever he rushes, he's got an eighty four point two grade. Like he is good. He is good. Uh, versatility and tackling. That's what he does. Can play D end, can play defensive tackle, can play a gap. He can play everything. Um, so if you, you, we don't have an interior guy and we lost a pick, right? Cause we traded one of those. Dontrez Walker, wide receiver, man, he'd be fun. Blake Corum, too rich for my blood. Jeremiah Trotter jr. Like him Bullard, the safety. I think we're good there. Let's see here. Brandon rice. Come on now. We got Jerry Rice's son there. That's a fun one. Um, let's look up uh, Dominique Pooney from Kansas and see how much he's a fit. 6'5", three, uh, 313 pounds. Not the quickest mover, but not too, too slow. Um, yeah, I don't know. Part of me said he's played a lot of left tackle. 6'5", 313, but man, he was slow. I don't know. I haven't done his film yet. So I'm, I'm going to pass on him. How about Theo Johnson? We took a tight end last year. Would you guys be upset with taking a tight end in the third round? Kind of similar spot. Met with the 49ers. Penn State tight end. 6'6", 259. He's big. Big old dude. Ran a 4'5". 10 and a quarter inch hands. This dude's built right. Um, 23 years old. Had a great senior bowl. After the catch specialist. All right. That fits. Amazing athlete who tested over a 90% at everything. I mean, this dude just 153 inline snaps. I like that. Had 34 catches, 341 yards, seven touchdowns. Hands, athleticism, check, check, check. Versatility. 
uh lighter mercedes lewis was uh what was was the one right here daryl appreciate you daryl he says i'm telling you jc mason pline tied in he's a sleeper yeah i gotta i gotta i can't find anything on him daryl I, I need to know your information you gotta email me 49ers rush podcast at gmail.com you you gotta let me know you gotta let me know um because what 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 is it that makes you like this guy and i love it because i like dude there's guys that I feel that way about too. You got to let me know what what it is. And Tommy appreciates says not 49ers relevant but Layden Vanderesh just retired. Um you know, he turned in a good career. He really really did for somebody that, you know, 2018 played 6 years. You know, I mean, one pro bowl all name team. He was a fun player coming out of Boise State. He was going to be a first round pick, and then he dropped because of the medicals, right? And that's the story. He still went pick nineteen, had a good career. Player drafted right after him, Frank Ragnow, maybe the best center in the NFL. Drafted right before him, Jair Alexander, Derwin James, Traymond Edwards, Colton Miller. Like there are some DJ Moore went after him, Calvin Ridley. Man, there are some names. Lamar Jackson went after him. There were some studs. What about just linebackers? Oh, this is the, what's it called, draft? Yeah, this is the Fred Warner linebacker draft. Isn't that funny? Yeah, Fred Warner went in the same draft, pick 70. Listen to the linebackers drafted after Lander Vander, Vander Esch. You had Fred Warner, Jerome Baker. Good Lord. Yeah, those those are two studs right there, man. I hate that Jerome Bo Baker went to Seattle. Uh, that, that Coach McDonald, he's starting to get these coverage linebackers so much smarter than freaking Pete Carroll. Ugh. Yeah. Um, let's get to a couple comments, questions before we make this pick. Joe, the Niners need to draft guard center and starting tackle. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you there. Brandon Rice, wide receiver, drops off big after this pick. I'm kind of leading Max Mitchell or Brand Brandon Rice. Those are my two favorite picks. Uh, Flid, John, my heart can't take it if the Niners don't get Rice. I like it. Um, huge tight end sleeper. Eric, I like it. Hey, that's freaking awesome. Rice isn't very good. He's basically Jennings. I, I disagree with that. He is a – Jennings was slow. Um, man, you look at – you know, Rice, that dude can play. I I, I I think I disagree there. Look at his measure. 6'2", 208. He ran a 4'5", flat. 1'5", 5, 10 yard. Nah, this dude can run, man. I mean, he's a speedster. Routes, here's what I wrote. He's already met with the Niners. 22 years old. Routes and polish. Very physical. That's the part that I do agree with you, Dan. Loves contact through his routes. Will draw a lot of defensive pass interference. Plays at a very high speed consistently. In-game GPS numbers are really high compared to his 40. Um, can kind of play everywhere. He likes out wide. He's good, man. Drop rate's a little high on contested stuff, but you know his hands I'm not concerned about. Footwork, route running, incredible. Blocking, awesome. Play style comps, Cortland Sutton for me. Um, Athletic comp is Drake London. And when you just plug the numbers in and the size in, I mean, he's a freak. But I am with you. Is he a guy that should be a first or second round guy? I don't think so. This is where he should go. This is the window. Um, And yeah, his his measurements, you watch his tape, man. He, he eats up that cushion quick. Um, Right here, Daniel says, you know, I wouldn't draft Rice and put the pressure on the kid to be his dad. That's a fair thing. That is a fair statement. You lie. Appreciate uh, the super chat. Does it concern that the Niners haven't signed any offensive linemen in free agency? Did Well, we signed Feliciano back, but, you know, you got that. They didn't draft any last year either. They love Jalen Moore. They love Bid Barch. They like Spitzer Burford with the upside. It's not consistent. That that's the issue. That's four. Like, and so if you sign somebody, you got it, you got you can't keep all these guys. You only keep eight. You want to throw Dix to kill in there? Fine. 
what Il Manning, I think, is the best sitter we have outside of Bid Barch. You know, some people want to throw Zakel in there, but I don't. I haven't seen anything positive for that guy in three years. So, so the questions become like, yeah, I know that they like the guys they got, but come on, it's not getting it done. You've got a bunch of decent players with no upside. Yeah, it concerns me. It concerns me. Um, right here, I would draft McCaffrey in round four or later. Good measurables, return kicks. Yep. Jennings is Rice's ceiling. That'd be a fair ceiling. You know, you know, he just got valued as second round pick. Jennings outplayed his it took a while though. But I don't think if you drafted Rice, he would be an outside wide receiver. He would not be a slot guy. He would be the he'd back up Ayuk. That's what he would do. And so if you drafted Rice, you put Rice behind Ayuk, you kick Ronnie Bell to the Jennings role, which is where he belongs. Then you're good. You got Chris Conley, who I'm glad they brought back. He stays in the Debo role, which he's done very well at. I love that they brought back Conley. Um, Mateo, I do like all the Neon babies <laughs> available. Gore Jr., Luke, Brendan, Trotter, Ellis. Yeah, uh, yeah. nepotism babies. Nepo babies. I think that's what you tried to uh, – There, yeah, he even put Nepo there. Which Kyle Shanahan's the most nepotism guy in the NFL. The most. It was Bill Belichick. He's gone. Now it's it's Kyle, for better or worse. That's just what it is. It's who he who he's always been. Um, right here, Brandon Rice had the third highest top speed in the 40, though. Super fast at the top end. Yeah, he gets there quick, and it shows on tape. And that's why you see quarters grabbing him all the time uh, because he just, man, whenever he goes, he's got that sixth gear. We need another quality route runner. I like that right here. Imagine leaving this draft with Law 2, Frazier, and Melton. That's a win no matter. See, I'm with you, Dan. Like, I'm sitting here, <coughs> excuse me, and Melton, you know, he's at the top of my list. Mason Smith, defensive tackle, maybe a little bit more. Not more of a need now, I don't think. Like, I, I'm with you, man. Like, it just seems easy. And I get the Jerry Rice thing. That's why, shoot, man, I got, I'm sitting right here with the starting lineup. Look at this. I, I mean, I've had this thing for freaking, I don't know. I don't even want to count those years. I'm mad that I even entertained or started down that path. I love it, but whenever I watch the tape, the biggest issue the 49ers have had since Kyle Shedahead and John Lynch showed up, not that it's necessarily a fault, it's slot corner. It's the nickel corner, which is a major, they're getting 70% of the snaps nowadays. Everybody want to talk about linebacker with Drake Greenlaw missing some time. Dude. Who's our starting nickel right now? Demo, right? That means, guess what? Daryl Luter Jr. or Ambry Thomas is starting outside. No. I'm going Max Melton. Pick number 94, cornerback from Rutgers. Love. Love this kid. This is an all-Chapman draft, man. I am being stingy. All right, we're at pick 106. We're up at 124 and 133 because we traded one of our, our, our middle third, right? So our middle fourth rounder. So we have 124, 131, 133. We traded 131 to jump up and go get Zach Frazier because I'm selfish. Um, Trade here. I like this trade, but I'm not going to take it because I want to make another pick in this mock draft. The Colts are offering their sixth rounder and next year's fourth for this fourth rounder. And because it's late, pick 124, like this is a, like a late pick. This is the Trey Lance pick. This is the pick we got from the Cowboys for Trey Lance. I would take this trade. They're offering us their sixth rounder, so we drop back 70 spots, but we get a fourth next year. I would take this trade. However, I'm not going to take this trade because I want, I want to make a pick <laughs> here in the fourth round. Uh, the Cowboys are offered us their 2025 fourth and 2025 sixth. I like the other one better. No, I'm not even going to talk about that. So, we're, we're, we're again, I would have taken that trade for the sixth and next year's fourth, but not now. Uh, I want to make this pick. So, 49ers on the clock. Ah, I think we made a mistake. <laughs> and this is the way the draft works, right? Because it's like, ah, um, seeing Andrew Phillips there. 
in the fourth round, who is like my my second day three nickel guy behind Max Milton. So like it's always the opportunity cost, but I'm not upset we got Max Milton. But if you would have guaranteed me Andrew Phillips, the cornerback from Kentucky, is going to be there the fourth round. Nah, I probably, probably would have punted at that position a little bit. I do like Andrew Phillips. The Niners have met with him as well. Another slot guy. Uh, Zach Center, interior offensive line. This is the big board that's available. Will Shipley running back from Clemson. Uh, lots of running backs. Luke McCaffrey's there. Uh, Michael Pratt, quarterback Tulane. I think that would be a perfect, perfect fit behind Brock Purdy. Is the fourth round quarterback pick a little too... Are we putting too much into it? Can he beat out, you know, Brandon Allen? But I don't think we have to worry about that because Brandon Allen cleared the entire year. We kept him on the roster and we did the whole third quarterback thing. You'd do that again if you wanted to. I do want to draft a quarterback at some point. I am not sure if this is the place for that. Um, offensive tackle, Malk, uh, again, Calves, which we don't have a tackle. And so, you know, because we traded up a pick, we got Law to the edge. That's incredible at 31. We traded up for Zach Frazier. We gave up our second and a fourth rounder for pick 51. Zach Frazier, that's incredible. My favorite pick. And then Max Melton. So these are all 49ers prime candidate players, perfect fits. Um, uh, McKinley Johnson, Jackson, the defensive tackle out of Texas A&M. Uh, the, the crazy athlete out of Tech that doesn't believe in space, the safety. Um, let's see, Malik Washington, wide receiver. Keep looking. Um, let's see here. Renardo Green, another corner available that I like a lot. Jacob Cowan, wide receiver. Defensive line, Tyler Davis, Clemson. J Jaheim Bell, tight end. There's some guys here that I like, that I really do like. Man, so let, let's start looking... Kind of position specific. Uh, are there any tackles that are developmental here? Because th this is an issue. The 49ers fans are going to riot if they don't draft a tackle. Now, Mac, uh, Matt Gal Goncalves out of Pittsburgh. Sorry, I keep messing up his name. 6'6", 327, team captain, smart, all these different things. Didn't play a lot this year. Only played 165 snaps at left tackle. I need to do some research on that. Um, but yeah, this is about where he's going to go. I need to do a lot more work on him. So I'm kind of going blind into this, but I'm being honest. You know, I'm not trying to like whatever. But man, he's way ahead of everybody else. Next up, you got Garrett um, Greenfield. Which, you know, you, you look at him, South Dakota State guy. I have, haven't got to film on him. Julian Pearl, offensive tackle of Illinois. Like, the value's not there. If you want to stay there and take Matt, Matt uh, Goncalves, cool. But, man, ah, that bothers me. Wide receiver, Luke McCaffrey, Malik Washington, Jacob Cowing. I really like him out of Arizona. There's some guys here. But, but, but let's look up the, the Luke. McCaffrey uh, writing report. He had a 6.73 code. He tested so damn well. 6'2", 198. He's bigger and faster than his brother. 4.4640. Met with 49ers. He's 22 years old. He played quarterback pretty much his entire career. Switched to wide receiver because that's where his NFL was going to be. Mostly a slot guy. Was not explosive. His testing says explosive. His film says, I don't know. Can kind of do everything. He had 71 receptions for 992 yards, 13 touchdowns. Had 15 rush attempts for 117. Like, he's a McCaffrey. You know what I mean? Like, he can kind of do it all, but he, he's underdeveloped. It, underdeveloped, not physically, just he's played all these positions. It just kind of bid on a subpar team. Rice, I don't know. Uh, I, I get why everybody loves him. I understand that. But you talk to me about a guy like Jacob Cowing, 5'8", 168, tiny, small, okay? Think Ray Ray McLeod replacement. 4'3", speed, ran a 4'3", 8". I, I mean, the dude just, 
explosive. He's 23 years old, productive, caught a pass in 57 straight games, never missed a game in five years. So when you look at Jacob Cowie, you see him stand next to all the wide receivers, like, what's this little kid doing? He's tidy. Never missed a game. Never missed a game in five years. Which used to be impossible. <laughs> you see it five years. But uh, he plays out wide because of the speed. Uh, he's a screen gadget guy. I like him, man. Uh, Jamison Crowder. Um, footwork is a nine. Route running is a nine. Acceleration is a nine. Blocking, that's a two. So that's the issue, right? Like, Shannon could use this guy. You you draft Jacob Cowing. He's Ray Ray McLeod day one. Is that worth it? Is the upside there? Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. But wide receiver-wise, I'm cool with McCaffrey. Jacob Cowing would probably be a guy that I like more just because, again, day one returner. Day one. Like, if you're concerned about Debo's health, this is your backup to Debo. Like, he comes in, you run two to three jet sweeps with him a game, couple screens, you let him do the Debo roll, you let him be your returner, done. D-U-N. It's over. Right? Um, interior offensive lineman. Let's talk Zach Zinner. Center. I like how he spells his name differently. Um, 6'6", 309, 23 years old, played mostly at right guard. All of his staffs were at right guard uh, this past year. He's just a mean, tough dude. Uh, IQ 9, linked 8, anchor ability 8, Zane Beatles, Gabe Jackson type player. Third round grade is where a lot of people see him going. You see he's got 105 ranking. It's a value here. You already got... You already got Zach Frazier. You brought back Feliciano. I uh, maybe a little bit too much of a luxury pick, because let let's say you're done. If you drafted Zach Center in the fourth round and you already got an interior offensive lineman like Zach Frazier, I I just can't see it. You're not going to keep all these guys, okay? You're not cutting Aaron Banks. You're not cutting our starting center currently, Jake Prindle. I don't care. You're not cutting him. You're not cutting. Um. The dude we just signed, who's going to be our starting left guard, Feliciano. You're not cutting Frazier. I don't think you're cutting Burford. Ben Bart, like you see what I'm saying? I want to do it. I know people would be okay with it. I want to say no. I'm going to say no on Zach Center, even though he's the top rated player. A lot of good running backs. What about Michael Pratt? Is it too early for a quarterback here? Oh, is it too early? Michael Pratt's fun, man. I'm telling you, he's a damn good quarterback. 6'2", 217. He's bigger than uh, Brock for sure. Small hands, nine and a quarter inch hands. Don't like that. 7'2", 3 cone. He already met with the 49ers. He's 23 years old, so him and Brock would be the same age. 65% completion percentage. Like that. 22 touchdowns, five interceptions. Protects the ball. 110 rating. And he could scoop, man. 98 rush attempts, 286 yards, five touchdowns. I mean, intermediate, he freaking dominates. That's his highest grade of any category. Great against pressure, decision-making poise, accuracy. Yeah, he's kind of a Derek Carr-type quarterback that you're getting late. Oh, man, part of me wants to go quarterback here, man. Luke McCaffrey... Michael Pratt. Or you could go a stud running back. Marshawn Lloyd's there. We don't need a running back. We've got three. But, man, you could kind of groom them. Mm, that's rough. Let, let's see here. Let's go through the chat. Um, Let's see here. Boop, 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 boop. Um, let's see here. They signed a quarter that's better than Luter. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm going to go through the film. I'm going to go through the film. I, I disagree with that a little bit, but that's okay. Make the fourth router count. I like it. Get Luke and call it a wash. I ain't mad about it. Zinter and Luke McCaffrey, their guys. Zinter's underrated. Two corners. Who would say no to that? I like it. Dan says this is an A++ draft. This is a fun one, man. This is a fun one. You're going to have a hard time walking Melton off the field. I agree, man. Oh, Javon Baker's gone, I believe. Um, out of UCF. I do like him. 
Pierce all over Cal. Yeah, everybody likes Pierce all over Cal. And Pierce all's going maybe first round, second round. I think Cowing's like a fourth round value. Yeah, I love Pierce all. I'm with you, Greg. I'm with you, buddy. Those are two diametrically opposed built human beings. Um, JD says third to fourth rounds are important. Aha, what's up, man? Appreciate you. 40 dollars Jed Robe. Uh, the consistency is always there. I love it. Zach Zenum can replace Burford long term. I don't think they're going to walk away from Burford, man. And you'd have to cut somebody. Like what? And that's the problem is now because we took Frazier, which is a great problem to have, Frazier could compete at guard early, easily. He anchors as well as anybody. I don't think you could draft two interior guys. You could. Greg, right here, Zinner's a beautiful thing, but yeah, we can't cut someone over it. Ah, uh, man. I Burford just, oh, it's so there. We saw it. I can't believe we just haven't developed him at all. I cannot believe that. <laughs> Look at Uncle Salty, my man. He says, bite your tongue on quarterbacks this soon. Okay. It makes sense, but man, if he's going to fall this far, we do have another pick in, nine, in like 11, nine picks, so... Maybe I should calm down a little bit. Um, let's see here. I guess everybody has their opinion. Good morning, Chavin. What's up, Rick? Glad to see you as always, brother. The tight end class. Let's see who's there on tight ends. I like that. <clears throat> yeah, there's some guys here. And, you know, the tight end is popular. We need one. That's something they haven't touched at all. You know, Jaheim Bell, 6'2", 241, Florida State tight end, smaller guy. Very small. Small arms, 33-inch arms, ran a 4-6, met with the Niners. Um, 12 missed tackles forced, which is top 15 in Yak, top 8 in missed tackles. Like, he's everywhere. So, he, he Nicole Pruitt, that, that's the my play style comp for him, which they liked. You got Dillian Holker. I like this tight end class, man. I really do. I don't have my write-up on him done yet. Yeah, there we go. Dallin Hooker. Sorry. Holker. There we go. I'm getting there. A 6'3", 241, a little bit bigger but smaller guy. <clears throat> Contested catches. You know, he's 6'8", three cone. He is shifty. 4'7", in the 40. He's fun. He Versatility is awesome. Noah Gray, Austin Hoopers, my athletic con Like, I like these tight ends. There's a couple. So, I'm just going to make the executive decision. We're going to take a tight end with our second, fourth round pick. So I'm going to go away from that now. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to pander. <laughs> Part of me says I'd go quarterback here if I was making my own decision. Just as having a good fourth round backup quarterback for a long time, that's cheap as hell. He'd make more than Brock Purdy his first year. Um, I'm going Luke McCaffrey. I'm doing it. I think wide receivers a need. I think returner, he fits that need. I think it'd be pretty fun for the fans, for the locker room, bringing in another playmaker, which they've kind of neglected the offensive side of the ball and free agency. So I'm taking Luke McCaffrey, pick 124. Now the 49ers are back on the clock. I'm not trading this pick because I'm selfish. And I want to make a pick. We're taking the tight end. Ah, and they're all still there. Tip Ryman still there. Jared Wiley's still there. Let's use this time to talk tight ends. What what else is better to do on a Monday, baby, than to talk fourth round tight ends with the people of the 49ers Rush community? I appreciate y'all so much. Like, I really hope like you guys are smiling as much as me. This is so freaking fun. I love this. I love this job. I love this job. Um, Tip Ryman became a favorite. Uh, during the combine because he's just a beast. 6'5", 270. So, like, when we're talking about Jaheim Bell, Dylan Holker, you're talking 35 more pounds. <laughs> you're talking two to three inches taller. I mean, he is huge. And with that, you are not sacrificing a lot of athleticism. Still ran a 4'6", so he's faster than a couple of those guys. Bigger tight end that can move, mean in the run game, versatile, versatile, love special teams, walked on, was eventually awarded his scholarship at Illinois. Like, what do you want from this guy? He had 460 inline snaps with his hand in the ground, 154 slot snaps. You know, not the most receiving production, 
But if you're trying to replace Charlie Warner, this is the most Charlie Warner, Charlie Warner in this draft. Tucker Craft was uh, athletic comp CJ Fedorowicz. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. This is my comp for him and the way he plays. He's a fun player. So, like, I, I'm telling you right now, I don't care. These rankings have Jaheim Bell, then Holker, then Jared Wiley TCU, then Tip Ryman. Let, let's give Jared Wiley his 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 day in court. Let's let's not be selfish over here. We're, we're using because these are all 49ers guys. Guess what? Jared Wiley met with the 49ers. 6'6, 249. So he's different than the other ones. You got your short, versatile, shifty guys in Bell and Holker. You got your tall, skinny guy in Wiley, and you just got your Corn fed, <laughs> tough as hell guy and Ryman. Pick your pick your poison, right? 6'6, 249. Ran a 4'6. He's quick. 7.1 uh three cone, which is okay. It's not as good as the other guys. Former quarterback. He can kind of play a little bit of everything, but he's more of a receiving guy. That's what he does. Austin Safari and Jenkins. That's what I'm taking. I I I'm lower on him. <clears throat> Than I am most other because, <clears throat> excuse me, I I don't like TCU and I've seen him play a little bit before. I haven't gone through his tape, but I've just watched broadcast games of him in which he struggled. I, that's not fair because I haven't watched the tape of the other guys as much. So, like, I'm just telling you my first impressions. If I'm ranking these guys, Bell and Tip Ryman are at the top of the list for me. So do you want the small kind of Kyle use check replacement? Then you want Bell. Do you want the Charlie Warner immediate replacement? You want Tip Ryman. And I think, you know, uh, that's probably uh, Ryman just makes too much sense for me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I, that's our worst grade. We got A's everywhere except for Tip Ryman, but I don't care. You, you take reaches, you know, so we walked away in this draft. Golly. Man, sign me up for general manager of the year. Us, we did this collective group. Couldn't be here without my scouts, my comment community. Law 2 failed to pick 31, the edge out of UCLA. I don't see that happening, but I'd be very happy. We traded up for Zach Frazier, one of my favorite players of this draft. Max Melton was sitting there in third round, 94. Corner, immediate start at the slots position. Luke McCaffrey, yeah, we did it. And then Tip Ryman, the tight end. This is a, Man, this is fun. This is fun. I am totally cool with this. Um, ah. Let, let's get to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. We're, we're getting off on development of players, but that's okay. Uh, Juan, the man, the legend. He says, just logged in, and we got Frazier and McCaffrey. Let's go. What's up, Juan? I hope all is well, brother. I miss you, man. I need to call you. Juan, if you don't know, Juan Sauce is the man behind the 49ers Rush podcast. Uh, he's just the best. All the videos, he's just the best there ever is. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Uh, John, did you see where Rice went in this mock? I'm curious. Ooh. I don't want to click on I got to save all this, so I don't know the answer to that. But we know that he went after our third round pick before our fourth. So middle fourth, early fourth. Uh, Jaheim Bell is good. I know. I know. I know. Um. Let's see here. If we take a tight end, he needs to block and block well. Well, we did that. Tip Ryman is freaking awesome. Um, and yeah, this is this is the problem. Tough not to get a tackle at this point. Phenomenal ads, but yeah, we're gonna have freaking Colts McKivitz back out there. Back at it again, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> somebody got that reference, hopefully. That's a problem. And if you don't get a tackle. In the first two rounds, you're done. Developmental guys are there. Perhaps you can find something, but... Uh, man, I, I mean, would you take... The tackles were gone. That's why Law 2 fell, right? And so if all the edge guys go and all the D-line goes, then guess what? We're going to have tackles at 31. You got to kind of see what falls there. And I think that's what good teams do. Yeah, you want to tackle. Yes, you want to tackle, but if you're going to have Latu, 
man, think of, you'd have Bosa and Latu. That could literally be the best defensive, rushing defensive end combo in the NFL. Like you could have stacked bookend, and those are expensive, and you're getting them on a cheap deal for at least four years, really five. You get that fifth year option. Medical's an issue, but that's why he's there at 31. That's why I think this is somewhat realistic. I wouldn't bet that to happen, but yeah, it hurts not getting a tackle. I, I, I just, I, I completely agree with you, Mateo. Um, yeah, it's tough. It hurts. Dan says pretty good draft. First three picks were winners. He's talking about Law Two, Frazier, Melton. That's three guys that could compete and start. Ah, ah, man. Yeah, I, I, I I'm not against against that at all. Like, ah, so, um. Yeah. We'll, we'll see, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll do more of these. We we got more stuff coming for sure, but, like, just got back from vacation late last night, and so I just wanted to jump on and uh, get the mind going a little bit and just see because we plugged a lot of the needs, but golly. Fun draft, man. Law 2 at 31, Frazier 51, Max Melton the corner, 94, Luke McCaffrey 124, and Tip Ryman the tight end at 133. We traded one of our fours to go up and get the center. So fun stuff. Now, reminder, if you want to take part in our March Madness 49ers Rush Bracket Challenge, you NCAA crazy, uh, you know, March Madness people, winner gets an autographed Deion Sanders jersey. Uh, yeah, costs nothing if you are part of our Patreon community at any level. Uh, that's already been posted there. If you are part of for the 49ers rush.com just click on our betting segment or on friend of the show segment you'll see the instructions posted there and if for some reason <clears throat> you don't want to do one of those even though we have a free trial that costs you nothing you can go sign up enter into the tournament then cancel your membership you can do that you'd said ten dollars venmo the instructions are in the description of this video and our audio podcast jonathan dash chapman dash two uh i spell my name weird so make sure you check the description to make sure you're sending it to the correct place and i'll send you the instructions on there so uh fun stuff fun show hopefully you guys enjoyed this it was an hour log ah i want to go i want to go i want, I want to start this show over again i was having so much fun but instead uh now it's going to be the time for me i'm going to dive in the film room i got, I got some free agents i got to break down so um malik collins all 22 breakdown coming in hot um, over on the 40 hoursrushcom and our Patreon channel. You guys are the best. Until next time, stay strong, faithful.